Welcome to Winging It. We're playing Arkham Horror the Card Game today, and this is a special series that I'm doing. I am going to be playing uh, the classic Dunwich Legacy campaign with uh, as a progression style, meaning I'm only using uh, cards from two cores and the Dunwich Legacy campaign. Now, I'm using all the cards from the Dunwich Legacy campaign. I'm not only using Paxes as I'm playing the scenarios. Uh, and I'm not playing Taboo because I don't think Taboo is relevant for a small card pool like what I'm playing with. But this is designed uh, for newer players uh, to you know get a, get a sense of what the game is like when they don't have a, you know a really large par card pool uh, to, to play through. And so I'm really excited to do this. The first time I've done Dunwich Witch on this channel um, in any form. I'm going to be playing with Agnes and Wendy, who are both core set investigators. Um, if you look at the links below, you will see a link to my deck video where I'll go through each card that's in uh, each of their decks and describe why it's there and what my plan is. Note there will be spoilers and I will be talking about uh, the campaign and things that are coming up in the campaign because a lot of what I'm doing is going to be meta knowledge about the campaign. This is not a blind through or anything close to that, although some of it may feel like a blind through as I haven't played this campaign in so long. Um, I, I haven't played either Agnes or Wendy in a long time. I do have a video series I did about six months ago with uh, with Wendy and Roland, and that was the last time I played her. I don't even remember how long it's been since I played Agnes, so uh, I am not an expert at piloting either of these investigators, but hopefully I'll do uh, an okay and decent job. We are playing on standard, and we're starting with The House Always Wins. You have an option at the beginning of Dunwich which one to choose. Uh, I am uh, playing the, the House Always Wins first. My reason for doing that, um, I, I, a lot of people like to say that the house always wins first is easier. I'm not actually sure about that. Um, but, uh, I guess the main reason I'm doing it is because, uh, I did pack a few extra allies that maybe I wouldn't normally take and I, I might be trying to upgrade as soon as possible. Um, that is for the ability that's at the Clover Club Lounge. Um, and so I just kind of want to get past that as, as quickly as possible. Uh, so anyway, let's draw opening of hands and then we'll take a look at the acting agenda and get started with the scenario. So Agnes will draw five cards. Let's take a look at what we got. We are definitely looking for allies. Okay, I'm um, here. Okay, we get to Mulligan. The uh, internal injury, or not mulligan, replace it. Okay, so we got the fire axe, which would give us a way to fight. Um, I think I am probably going to throw away everything except for the ward of protection in an attempt to find allies. We definitely don't need the right of seeking right away because, although you know, there's clues on the starting location. Uh, most of your clue getting is done through other means, so. Getting four more cards. Okay, we got the shriveling, which is good. We'll be able to fight. Drawn to the Flame actually might be able to allow us to get uh, the clues off the starting location. Um, unfortunately, not being able to, not having um, uh, an ally is going to hurt, but we'll do what we can. We did the, get the Forbidden Knowledge, which is something we can put out to defend ourselves a bit against uh, enemies. Do one damage at least by taking a horror. All right, now let's see if Wendy can find one of her enemies. Agnes has four, or allies. Agnes has four in her deck. Um, Wendy only has three, so. All right, double or nothing. Oh, we need one more card. Let's see. We're thinking, okay, none of these are going to be particularly useful at the beginning. Uh, the backstab might be useful for fighting when uh you when uh when the enemies come online but we got a little bit of time before this thing so we're going to just mulligan the entire five cards again what's the odds that i don't get uh an ally in either of their all right we got the newspaper we got the perception the lone wolf we got another backstab and no allies how crazy is that i don't think this has ever actually happened to me so we do have the newspaper which will help us to get clues uh and the perception so there is uh potentially a goal for us to get those a uh, way for us to get those two clues off, of, off the starting location which we kind of probably want to do before the clover club boss comes in but maybe agnes can move up and uh give wendy a little bit of space uh 
toxins. I think Wendy will primarily be doing that. I think Agnes can get set up with her uh, shriveling, so she's able to fight once enemies do become a thing. But I think my strategy is going to have to be to just go to the bar. Uh, you know, you try to avoid the bar if you can, uh, because it ends up costing you actions later on. Uh, but without having allies to sacrifice for clues, you're going to have to go there, and maybe you'll draw into an ally. Um, the card room, you know, Wendy has the ability to redraw the tokens from there. Uh, so maybe she could be good at the card room. You know, the orphan playing with cards, but play, playing in cards. I don't know. All right, let's look at uh, the act and agenda and all that good stuff. So uh, we have the uh, agenda here. The Clover Club. You have entered the Clover Club casino in search of Dr. Morgan. The club is bustling at this late hour, filled with patrons looking to relax and drink or make it big. You don't appear to be in much danger. Each criminal enemy gains aloof. Forced, if an investigator deals damage to a criminal enemy, immediately advance. So we don't want to do that. We're at a foraging threshold and we don't want to advance early. All right, now we have uh, our act. Beginner's luck. You need to find Dr. Morgan. The club is packed. Perhaps somebody knows where he is. It's a free trigger. When you reveal a chaos token, you may treat that uh, token as if it were any other token in the chaos bag. If you do, remember that you have cheated. Groom limit once per round. Uh, the effects of doing that are very hard on the entire campaign. I'm going to avoid doing that at all costs. Objective. When the investigators have collected the requisite number of clues, they must immediately spend them in advance. And we are looking at a eight clue threshold, which is really, really high. Um, okay, and then we'll look at our starting location, which here we have La Bella Luna. We have two clues, uh, two shroud, and you have the option to, option to resign. This is a bust. So if things get too bad, we may just do that. There's two clues here. Uh, not, not going to Wendy just yet. So I think Wendy just is going to start. So I'm actually going to spend one resource to put down her newspaper. Okay, This is going to boost her intellect by two. So she's now at five B2. So up by three is really, really good. We will uh, investigate. Oh, you know, the thing I didn't talk about, I'll go ahead and say this, is the Clover uh, Club Pit boss. Um, so he preys on the highest intellect, which would be Wendy. Uh, that's if he's hunting, He has, it's a tiebreaker. But he's aloof because of what we saw on the agenda. Um, he's a hunter, and so he'll hunt. Um, and fourth, after an investigator at the Clover Club Pit Boss location gains any number of clues, Clover Club Pit Boss readies, engages that investigator, and makes an immediate attack. He's a victory point one. Um, so he'll hunt onto them it would be nice if we get these clues then he'll hunt here and then we can walk away from him um, eventually we'll have to kill him but not right away so anyway okay so we get plus two because we don't have any clues she's at five v2 which is pretty good okay minus one we get the clue Okay, and now the newspaper's turned off, so she's at 3v2 now. Um, we're going to go ahead and commit perception to this test, and we'll be going at 5v2 again. This time with the boost from perception. Okay, we get the elder sign, so it's plus zero. We pass. That's good. We get the clue. So we got two of our eight clues, so... We are a quarter of the way there, and we get to draw a card from Perception. So Wendy will get another backstab. Well, she is ready to fight if she can make some money, which might mean getting this lone wolf down. But I think uh, Agnes is just going to go to the Clover Club lounge bar so she can draw cards. She's going to move to the Clover Club pit, uh, lounge, which is... Uh, while it is Act 1, Clover Club Lounge gains action. Discard an ally asset from your hand. Gain two clues from the token pool. Limit once per game. So this is why I was trying to get allies, but I didn't get any. So that is unfortunate. She'll move to the Clover Club Bar. While it is Act 1, Clover Club Bar gains uh, spend two resources, gain two clues from the token pool, and draw two cards. Remember that you have had a drink limit once per game. So there's no advantage to me doing it now. 
I am going to do that, but it, there are negative effects from doing that. It's it's pretty brutal. So we're going to not mess with that right now. And instead, I'm just going to go ahead and spend... Oh, okay. She doesn't start with that many resources. She only starts with five. We'll spend three to put down a shriveling, uh, which we're not fighting anytime soon. But at least it'll be nice to have it ready to go. When the fighting does start. So we also have this forbidden knowledge we'd love to get down. Okay. <clears throat> so that is it. It is uh, the Clover Club boss. He's going to hunt Wendy. So he comes here. He's still loose. So he doesn't engage her. It's fine. Agnes will draw. Another guts. So we have willpower tests. I guess she's ready with her two cuts to pass it. And the five willpower doesn't seem that useful right now. The thing is, the two cards we draw from here might draw her into an ally, so that's something to keep in mind. All right, and then Wendy will draw a Cuts as well. We are set up for some willpower treacheries. Okay, and then she gets a resource. So Wendy probably is going to go gamble. We'll see. All right, um, so we put one Doom on the agenda. So one of four doom, and it's time for encounters. Agnes will get a swarm of rats. Well, that is actually kind of. I should have. I should have put out the uh, the forbidden knowledge because then I could just hang it and it would be dead. So already a misplay because I haven't played these this scenario in a long time. And when he gets a swarm of rats, I promise that I have. I shoveled this. All right, so Wendy is going to punch the Swarm of Rats. She is going to commit a backstab to that, which gets her up to 2v1. She is up by 1 with the ability to redraw. I think that's okay. She can pitch a card to redraw. She would probably pitch one of her, her guts to redraw. Zero, she passes, and it's dead. All right, so that's her first action. A second action is to come here, and her third action is probably to spend one and play Lone Wolf, because she's gonna need some money uh, if she's gonna plan on gambling. All right, so now Agnes has got the issue with the Swarm of Rats. Uh, she can try it to punch it up by one, but she doesn't have the ability that uh, Wendy does. We could try to just shrivel it, which I think is probably our best bet. Um, where it's five v one, it's overkill. This is my uh, this is what I pay for not uh, not getting forbidden knowledge out. All right, zero. We should just punch them. All right, so they are dead, and she doesn't take a horror because she didn't draw a spooky token. Second action, we're going to go ahead and put out Forbidden Knowledge with uh, Horse Secrets. Um, and once again, I'm not sure that we need to do that action at the end of the turn. I'm, I'm actually tempted to just draw cards looking for something and then we can do that at the beginning of next turn so she will just draw a card and she will get arcane studies uh not particularly useful but she can definitely commit it to test so that's pretty good all right time for upkeep agnes will get another war of protection Wendy will get a perception back for when we're, we're dealing with investigating again. All right, we are at two of four. Oh, the uh, the Clover Club pit boss is going to hunt here. Should have already done that. We're at two doom. And now we draw encounters. All right, we get hunted down. 
Uh, this is for Agnes. If there are no unengaged criminal enemies in play, hunt the down gains surge. If there's one or more unengaged enemy in, in his play, each of them moves one location toward you. Each criminal enemy that engages you as a result of this effect makes an immediate attack. So the problem with this is, is that this is going to disallow Agnes from being able to use the ability uh, at her location because then he will engage her in attack. Moving on to her isn't that big of a deal, but this is why I actually should have, instead of drawing a card, um, I should have just done the ability to prevent this situation from happening. But anyway, I will spend one resource and play a Ward of Protection on uh, to cancel that treachery. It's such a weak sauce treachery. I should have. Uh, I shouldn't have had to do that. It was just uh, an unfortunate play on my part. Uh, so, so that we can use the ability. All right, and now Wendy is going to draw a counter card, and she will get a mobster. So he's retaliate forced after mobster attacks you lose one resource. They spawn in her location. He is aloof, so it's not a big deal. Okay, so I think Agnes goes first and she does the Clover Club Lounge, which is she's going to spend two resources. Uh, she gets two clues and draws two cards. I said lounge, but it's actually the bar. And she'll get two, uh, two cards. She'll, she'll get a Rite of Seeking. Eventually, she'll want to play, but it's very expensive. And then she'll get a Delve Too Deep, which is something that we'll want to play, but not right now. Okay. Um, ideally, you want to wait till the end of the scenario to deal with that. Okay. So we've got the two clues. We're at four clues. We're halfway there. Um, we're going to stay here, probably. We're just going to gain two resources so that we can gamble because we're going to need to gamble if we don't find an ally soon all right and then wendy she gets a free resource from lone wolf and she will move into the clover uh, club card room which is while it is Act 1, Clover Club card room gains. Spend two resources. Reveal a random chaos token. If it is an Elder Sign, gain two clues and gain two resources from the token pool. If it's an no even number, two clues from the token pool. If it's an odd number or a, a picture token or an autofill symbol, nothing happens. I think your odds are like 40% on this. They're very not good. Um, so you're just going to gamble it up. Agnes actually should have uh, moved in to prevent the mobster from coming on to Wendy, but she didn't. So that was a mistake. But actually, I think we can rectify it. Okay, so she is going. Uh, uh, we're gonna. We're we're going to do the. We spend the two resources, and Wendy is going to gamble. Let's flip this over. But the plan to pitch guts for a redraw if we need it. Okay, we got a negative three. So what is it? Negative numbers? It's if it is an even number. Okay, so we are going to pitch. We're going to discard guts to redraw. Elder sign, awesome. Go, Wendy, go. So you actually what? You gain two resources, right? Gain two resources. Gain two clothes and two resources. So she gets her resources back. Awesome. So we'll get two clues. Now I'm willing to try it again, but actually I think I'll move to the Clover Club. Now, if she stays here, we'll try it again. I 
I don't know that I want to pitch any of these cards, though, for a redraw. Okay, that's a fail. All right, so no clues for her, but it's okay. Okay, so it's the end of the round. The mobster moves here. Or he doesn't hunt. The Clever Club boss moves here. And now it is time for upkeep. Agnes will get another shriveling. All right, so she is probably going to be our fighter. And a resource. And Wendy will get a flashlight. Appropriate for the Clover, yes? Okay. Resource. Okay, so we're at three Doom. We advance next turn. So that is definitely a thing. Okay. Agnes will get from the encounter deck, she will get a twist of fate. Reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If you reveal an elder sign or a positive number, nothing happens. If you reveal any other number, take one damage. If you reveal a spooky token, you take two horror. Okay. So Negative two is uh, is damage, right? Take one damage. Okay, she, she can afford one damage. She's got painkillers in there somewhere, right? Okay, and then uh, Wendy will get Cursed Luck. You have next negative one skill value during your skill test. Forced after you succeed a skill test by one or more, discard Cursed Luck. So that is a thing. All right, so I think she's going to come in and get the two cards and two resources and then just get set up to move and get clues while Agnes is going to get set up to fight. All right, so Wendy will come here and she will spend the two resources and we'll remember that she's had a drink and she gets two cards and two clues. Actually, that's all the clues we need. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Okay, it's fine. We should have gotten one uh, resource from Lone Wolf. Yeah, she gets the two clues. She's had a drink, and she'll draw two cards. She gets Leo DeLuca. And a quick thinking. All right. We have to spend immediately these clues to advance. After speaking to a number of gamblers and servers, it seems as though Dr. Morgan has had quite the run lately. Instead of cashing out his winnings, he was convinced to double down. He was last seen at the guarded hall near the back of the card room, but they set aside darkened hall into play. If it is Agenda 1, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a criminal enemy is discarded and spawn the enemy at the darkened hall. This is why I paused a little bit. I had forgotten that I was going to advance immediately and have to put a criminal enemy into play. But it's nothing that we can't handle. So the darkened hall is here. Okay. And we will uh, put it here. Well, I guess we'll put it up here. It's fine. Uh, I think it's going to actually be easier to follow eventually if I put it down here. All right. So that's what we will do. And uh, then we have to discard until we find an enemy and spawn him there. So we get, okay, a mobster right away. So this is another mobster. Retaliate after he attacks you, you lose one resource. So Wendy has one action left and she will grab a resource because she wants to play this Leo DeLuca out. All right, so. 
It is now Agnes' turn. Let's see. What does Agnes do? Well, we really want to fight, and we want to want to make sure that we're like set up for that. So we'll spend three resources to put out her other shriveling. She has two arcane slots for shriveling. So we are ready to go. All right. Uh, so that was her action one. Um, action two and three, I'm tempted to get resources so that I have them uh, for like if Peter comes out, because I would really like to get Peter out into play or Holy Rosary. All right, so the Hulk Clover Club pit boss is going to hunt to them. He is still aloof. And now it is time for upkeep. Agnes will draw. Well, speak of the devil. It is Peter. She gets a resource. Okay, and then Wendy will get a sneak attack. Okay, well that's uh, not too bad. And a resource. So she's got a little bit of fighting power as well. All right, so now We advance the agenda, because we're at four doom. Your questioning has drawn the attention of several men, hired thugs by the look of them. Francis doesn't want to be bothered, one of them says. We suggest you leave to the premises before we force you to leave. You shuffle the encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. If players have completed extracurricular activity, advance directly to agenda 2B. We have not, so we don't do that yet. Um, if the house always wins, the first scenario in the campaign, advance to Agenda 2A. Okay, welcome back. I actually made a mistake about what I was reading as far as action agendas, so rather than being confusing, I just am jumping ahead here. I've already shuffled the encounter deck, um, but now we have Agenda 2A, Underground Muscle. Most of the other patrons seem oblivious to the mobsters and goons closing in around you, but you recognize this for what it really is. You're about to get roughed up. So we'll see about that. Now, notice that this agenda does not have the same clause that that uh, enemies gain aloof. Um, so they are not aloof, and they need to engage. Since the Clover Club pit boss has um, a uh, highest uh, intellect, it's going to go after Wendy. Because she has the highest intellect. All right. Now let's draw some encounter cards. Agnes will get... Hunted down. If there are no unengaged enemy, uh, enemies in play, hunted down against Surge. If there are one or more unengaged criminal enemies in play, each of them moves one location toward you. Each criminal enemy that engages you as a result of this effect makes an immediate attack. So this would make the mobster come and attack her, which is, and then, and that means that we would lose one resource. So there's like a lot of reasons not to do this. We have this other water protection. Uh, so I am going to go ahead and spend one resource and play the Ward of Protection, which takes a horror on Agnes, and she can use her ability to do a damage to the Clover Club Pit Boss, which actually doesn't, uh, it doesn't help me a lot, as I don't have another way to do uh, another damage to him, but might as well do it. Um, and that cancels, that cancels the uh, Hunted Down. All right, and then, Wendy gets a swarm of rats. Okay, well, see, now we really made a mistake, actually, by using Agnes's ability, because now we can't use it to help save Wendy. So, uh, yeah. We could have uh, made better choices. Let's see, what are we going to do here? Does Wendy have a way to evade or punch the rats? So she could commit a bunch of icons toward punching the rats. Uh, and then what does she do? She moves to the card room and just chills for a little bit because she can't do anything about that mobster, I guess. But we do have to deal with the rats. Oh, but we have to deal with the, Clo the Clover Club pit boss too. All right. So I think Agnes is going to shrivel the uh, Clover Club Pit Boss. So she's going to... She's at 5v3. 
Um, we really don't want to mess around. Um, we'll go at, we'll commit this uh, Arcane Studies to be 6v3, so we're up by 4. So we should be able to pass this test. The reason I'm not engaging first is I want to have one last action to, to play Peter. So. But I'm making sure I get the kill first. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No. I want to be up by 4. 6v3 is not good enough. We're going to commit Guts. Sorry. Five, six, seven to beat three. Goodness. We don't want to do two damage to Gendy. It only buys us one more token, but it's worth it at this point. All right, zero. So we do uh, two damage to the Clover Club Pit Boss, and we get to draw a card from the Guts. Okay, the Heirloom of Hyperborea. Again, usually just committed for icons. Um, we will go ahead and commit another Guts to be up to seven. We'll use another card on Shriveling to do an unnecessary amount of damage. <laughs> we only need to do one damage, but with her fight of two, I don't really know a way that we're going to be able to ping for one damage. I should have been, like I said, I, I should have just used a, not used her ability back then. I guess I had in mind that somehow Wendy might be able to do one damage. Okay, we auto fail, which means Wendy takes two damage, and we take a horror. So that could have clearly gone better. He's like, Agnes, what are you doing to me? All right, we're going to use our last charge of this shriveling. And uh, we will commit the heirloom of Hyperborea. And again, we are up by four. Agnes is like, Wendy, could you spare me your ability? So the Clover Club Pit Boss is now dead. Goes into the victory display, so we get one victory point. So we're on our way. Now one thing you might have asked is why I didn't use Backstab, uh, Wendy with Backstab, to kill uh, the uh, Clover Club Pit Boss. But the problem is, is that her only way of boosting uh, agility would be to commit this I'm out of here, which I want uh, for other things. And um, also she has this Cursed Luck which is a problem uh, that would make it less likely for her to hit. So we're just going to rely on Agnes to do, you know, damage stuff. Okay, so Wendy now needs to kill this uh, this swarm of rats. She is going to commit, because I mean, we're prob probably not going to be playing backstab. Um, we're going to be playing, uh, you're going to commit backstab, quick thinking, and sneak attack. So she is actually at... Uh, one, two, three, four, but down to three with her uh, Cursed Luck. So she's at 3v1, and if we need to, we can ditch uh, either our Perception or our Flashlight, probably the Perception, to uh, redraw. So 3v1 up by two is pretty good. Two, she does not get rid of the Cursed Luck because she's exceeded evenly, and Quick Thinking does not go off. Uh, she doesn't get her extra action, but she does kill the rats. So that's a, that's a thing. Okay, she's going to spend six resources to play uh, Leo DeLuca. So now she will have uh, extra actions every turn. She has two, extra, two actions now. She will move here. And I think she's going to draw a card just so she can fill up her hand. Well, I mean, I don't know. Actually, she's probably going to take a resource so that next turn she can play the flashlight, which is pretty... Uh, she wants to have that out. So, yeah. Well, actually, uh, she has a lone wolf resource. So, no, we'll draw a card. We'd like to get some agility icons so she can evade that mobster. But anyway, she draws... <laughs> okay, ask and you shall receive. All right. Pretty okay turn. The auto fail stinks, but at least now Wendy has some damage soak. So, all right, Agnes will draw for upkeep. So that's a fun way. She will draw the fire axe, which is a way that she could do you know one point of odd damage 
here and there if she wanted to do that. Not sure if we're going to do that or not, but okay. And then uh, Wendy will get guts. Get a resource. All right, so we are at one of three doom. And draw. Uh, Agnes is going to draw. Banian's thug. While it's while it's engaged with you, you cannot gain resources. All right. I think this guy has picked with the wrong waitress. What do you think? I think so. At least I hope so. Okay. And then uh, Wendy will get another cursed luck, which means she's getting minus two to all her skills, which is absolutely awful. Actually. Um, that means she would be evading two up on that uh, mobster, even with, with the manual dexterity. Uh, man, that is that is gross. I don't know how to get rid of those two, the cursed lock. So I think Agnes is going to just take a shot with the shriveling. She's going through the shriveling awfully fast. Um, and she will commit, she's at five, she's at five to beat four. She will commit Arcane Studies and Drawn to the Flame to beat six, seven to beat four. She got a zero, so he is dead. She's going to spend one to play a Fire Axe. Gives her another damage. And then she's going to spend three to play Peter Sylvester. We'll just put this shriveling underneath the other shriveling for now. It's still there, so we can discard it if we need to. All right. So now Wendy's got to figure out how she's going to get by this mobster. I think she's just going to draw cards for now. She gets a resource from Lone Wolf. Fill up our hand. We'll draw a card. An elusive. We could commit the elusive and the manual dexterity, and she would be at 5v2. I mean, that's good for evasion. It doesn't really get her past. But I think there's actually a test that she, if she, if she, to, I want to get rid of these cursed lucks. But I think we can do it. Uh, I think there's a location that she'd be able to investigate if she has the uh, flashlight down. So, okay. Uh, she'll move. The mobster will engage her. So that was her second action because we drew. We've taken two actions. Her third action is going to be but first we have to um, Okay, it's a four shroud, zero clue location. When darkened Harl is revealed, put into play the three set aside black back hall doorway locations. That's the reason I put it here, is because I knew they were gonna be putting three locations into play around it. So we've got these three. So we'll put them one, two, and all right she's going to try to evade the mobster committing manual dexterity and elusive so the this takes her agility down to two that brings it back up to five she's at five v two she's probably gonna pass but she's probably not gonna pass uh, I want it more. I mean, she might. But, uh, and then we'll throw away the guts to redraw if we don't, uh, we don't succeed. Zero. Excellent. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty good. She will draw a card and get another newspaper, which doesn't really help. Uh, actually, it does help because it's an icon we can pitch. Um, and the monster is evaded. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, okay. This monster is at this location. This is the one that she evaded. Is here. All right. And then for her last action, she will move into this back alley doorway down here. And we'll see what she gets. 
So we drew a card, we moved, we evaded. Okay, so we got the VIP area. While you're at the VIP area, you cannot draw cards or gain resources during the upkeep phase. Yuck. All right. Well, we can get this. There's two clues here. We can get it cleared out. This is where we would need to spend clues to advance. Again, I'm not planning to advance. I'm just planning to get the clues, delve too deep, and leave. All right, so that's everything. This mobster readies. And we do upkeep. Agnes gets flashlight. She might be able to help getting some clues. And a resource. And Wendy does not get cards or resources because, yeah. All right, we're at two of three doom. It's time for encounters. Agnes will get. Okay, she gets her own cursed luck. Oh, and these are discarded, thankfully. Oh, Wendy with another swarm of rats. Oh my goodness. That is uh, actually pretty unfortunate. Invading them at one up. So Agnes can shrivel that mobster. But she can't help Wendy with her swarm of rats. She's actually only up by two on that match. Well, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Agnes will move here. She'll move here. The monster engages her. And then she will use shriveling. No. I never put the swarm of rats out on Wendy. Okay. Minus two. And we were at 4v2, so we succeed. But we don't get rid of Cursed Luck. So that's that. Okay, Wendy, I think, is going to try to evade at one up and pitching guts uh, to, to retry. So Wendy, action one. Oh, she gets a resource from the wolf. Baiting the rats up by one. I've got this I'm out of here with the two uh, agil agility icons taunting me. Um, but I don't want to use it because I want it to use it for VP. Okay. Minus one. Okay, so we pass. So our rats is evaded. All right. We never did get the flashlight down. Uh, but her, her intellect is actually at three... Four, five to beat three. She's up by two. That's probably fine. By two. Pitch the guts to redraw if we fail. Uh, I could get the flashlight out, but I could then I have to deal with the rats next turn, which may not be the worst thing. Okay, plus one. She gets the clue. So now her newspaper is turned off. It becomes a useless card because we're going to hold on to her clues, I believe. Um, and then we will uh, commit newspaper and perception to another investigate test, which gets her to three, four, five, six, three up. Minus one. So we get the card draw from Perception, which is another Leo DeLuca. An intellect icon is pretty good. So she gets two clues. And then she'll move away from the rats. Okay, the rats ready. And we do upkeep. So Agnes gets some painkillers, which help her deal with the dam damage, potentially. Or her, uh, yeah, the damage on her. She gets two resources, which makes the fire axe somewhat viable if she needs to use it. 
and then we'll get uh, Wendy's Amulet. Now that makes me wonder what events are in the top of my deck, and do I care? So we'll just take a look and see what uh, event she's got in the top. She's got uh, an elusive. That could be useful. Sneak attack could also be useful. Max out. She's got some fight events here that uh, might be useful if we get her amulet out. So it's a thing to think about. All right. Uh, the agenda advances. You hear a crash from somewhere outside and screams of pain in the lounge. A terrible monstrosity smashes through the entrance to the club, crushing the stairwell and no knocking over gangsters and patrons alike. Spawn a random enemy from the set aside hideous abominations and counter set in the Clover Club Lounge. Okay, so we'll do that. We've got uh, this counter set. We're going to pick one of three. One of these is a VP. The other two are conglomeration of spheres, which are gross, but it's part of what it is. Okay. We kind of want it to be the VP enemy because we just want to be able to kill him and get the VP. Not have to wait for him to spawn, which in, in two-handed is a lot dicier than it is in, like, say, four-player. All right, we get conglomeration spears. So this is really a really this is such a painful enemy. It's six health, um, but after you perform an attack against the conglomeration spheres using a melee card, discard that card. So the fire axe would get eaten, but you can use spells um, against it. So anyway, it's a one fight, six health, four evade, and of course you can just punch it. It just eats actions to do that. Um, it is a hunter. And it, it hunts the lowest uh, willpower, which actually, they're both, uh, that would be Windy with her four willpower. All right, so that's where that guy goes. Um, and then we uh, shuffle the rest of the encounter set, the set aside striking fear encounter set, and the uh, encounter discard pile into the encounter deck. So all of this is going into here. I'm going to shuffle this up. Okay, reading, uh, reading on, um, remove all investigators and unengaged enemies from La Bella Luna to the Clover Club Lounge. There are none. Remove it from the game. So this is removed from the game. So we have no more exit. We're going to have to find a different exit. Okay. Now let's look at the new agenda. It is a Seven Doom Threshold. Amidst the chaos and the confusion, the strange abomination attacks everyone in the club. Screams echo through the halls as the blood begins to spray. Fourth, at the start of the enemy phase, discard each criminal enemy at the same location as the abomination enemy. So, the, the, uh, these abominations, like the conglomeration of spheres, will eat those guys. Um, they won't eat the rats, though. Okay, now we're doing encounters. We will get Dissonant Voices. Put Dissonant Voices in play in your threat area. You cannot play assets or events. At the end of the round, discard Dissonant Voices. Okay. So, no delving or playing our flashlight or anything like that. But we probably weren't going to get clues with Agnes anyway, because we just want we need to get the clues and then play them out of here. That's the plan. All right, we get an Ovanian Thug for Wendy, who shouldn't have too much trouble evading this guy. But uh, actually, probably it's better for Agnes just to kill the Obanian's thug. The issue being, well, um, actually, Wendy can commit guts to uh, to uh, Agnes using shriveling. She's using up her shriveling charges, which would make killing the uh, the enemy a little bit tougher. But uh, the VP enemy, but I just don't think we're going to get it. So I, don't, I think it's best to just go fast, get out of here, delve, and be done. So Agnes is going to shrivel. She's at, she's at four willpower because of cursed luck. But uh, Wendy will commit guts. Uh, we are going at four, five, six to beat four. I'm only up by two. She'll go ahead and commit this painkillers to be up by three. Banian thugs are tough. Minus one. Okay, so she clears her curse lock. 
And she gets to draw a card from the guts. No. Wendy gets to draw a card from the guts. What was I thinking? <laughs> Boy, how long have I played this game? I understand basic mechanics. Okay, Wendy draws a Lucky, which is pretty cool. Okay. But Agnes does get rid of her curse luck, so that's nice. Okay, uh, so that was her first action. I think we explored, since we can't put things into play, uh, and we don't want to get hit by the rats. So Agnes will move into the back alley doorway here, and we'll see what it is. It is... Okay, this is a... Uh, Two shroud, two clue location. After you fail a skill test uh, while investigating the art gallery, you lose two resources. So this is not really where Wendy wants to go yet. We want to kind of finish off at that location. So uh, and then Agnes, what's she going to do? I think we draw just because we want to see if we can get the second delve too deep. So she'll draw a card, which will be another forbidden knowledge. Okay. Which actually, putting two of those out is a good way to deal with, um, to, to be able to pump up her fire axe. So not too bad. We don't discard the distant voices yet. We discard it at the end of the round. Okay. Um, and then Wendy. Oh, we killed this Obanian's thug. <laughs> That was also a thing we did. That was the reason we did all of that. Um, she's going to spend two resources to play her amulet, um, which will now allow us to, if we had the resource, oh, and she gets a resource from Lone Wolf. Um, oh, that's a flashlight. Okay, uh, she's going to play the amulet. So now, if, uh, if we wanted to spend, uh, again, Elusive is on the top of her deck. So we could spend two to uh, play Elusive and get out of here. Okay, so uh, we are going to, then that was action one, action two, we'll move into, this is the back alley. Um, this is a one shroud, two clue location, resign, we can't get out this way. So I think it's worth it to play the flashlight here, uh, because that reduces the shroud to zero, and then only the auto fail loses. So... Okay, so, and I do want to, this, this is maybe not intuitive to new players, um, but the other thing is, there's a, so this is a victory point. We're trying to get all these victory points by clearing them of clues. When you resign at this location, you drop all of your clues, uh, which is, you know, not, uh, it means that the, you don't get the victory point for that. So the only way to get the victory point is to resign from another location, which is why I've been holding on to, I'm out of here. So if, if, we can, if, if, if she can get all the clues, um, and then go move to the darkened hall and resign from there. Then she drops the clues there, and she gets the victory points. So, okay. So there are two clues here. We played the uh, amulet. We moved in. We'll spend two resources and play the flashlight in her other hand. I'll move one wolf down here. Uh, and it's got three supplies. But we'll use one of the supplies, which reduces the shroud down to zero. Again, because we can't resolve a test below zero, this unless we get an auto fail, we just win this. And she can pitch a card to uh, to redraw if we get the auto fail. So our odds are very, very high of getting a clue here. Negative two. Shroud is zero, so we succeed and we get a clue. So that was all of her actions. Okay, the conglomerate, um, it's the beginning of the enemy phase. The conglomeration of spheres eats the mobster and then hunts here. Okay, and then the uh, swarm of rats is going to hunt. And uh, the distant voices, it's not goes, it goes away, not yet. It's almost going away. All right, now it's upkeep time. Uh, get dark memory for Agnes. Uh, so this is, uh, she would add um, 
This is the one which is going to place one doom on the current agenda. Cause the turn agenda to advance. If there are memories in your hand at the end of your turn, reveal it and take two horror. She probably can just hold on to it, although it doesn't really matter. But she's not actually sticking around that long. She just really wants to delve. Um, she's got three resources. You know, unless an enemy pops up. And even then, Wendy probably can take care of the VP enemy. Wendy will get abandoned and alone. Okay. Take two direct horror. Okay, this is uh, unlucky. So all of her elusive and everything that I've had in her discard pile just becomes gone. Removed from the game. Yuck. Okay, so all of her fighting cards that I was playing to just say that I could use to defeat an enemy. Yeah, that doesn't happen. Because she's abandoned and alone. Because Agnes is over there in the art gallery instead of hanging out with her. Of course, she is being a lone wolf, so I don't know that you can really blame her too much. But anyway, okay. Uh, encounter cards. Agnes. Oh, now the Distant Voices actually does go away because the end of the round. Agnes will get... Cursed Luck, okay, again, seen that card a lot, and Wendy gets a Rotting Remains, okay, so she's going at 4v3, um, she's probably okay in Horror, plus she has a Lucky, Zero, she passes. Okay. Good deal with the rotting remains. So now with her amulet out, we actually would want to pitch Lucky uh, to redraw a test, and then we could use it from her discard pile because it would be on top of her discard pile. Um, we could also pitch I'm out of here for uh, an evasion and then use it on the top of her discard pile to, you know, leave. So anyway, um, I think Agnes is going to move into uh no i think i think windy oh this is tough i think she delves actually no yes okay she could delve yeah okay so agnes is going to delve i don't see anything that could actually kill her except if she spawned the vp enemy or something like that uh so she'll play delve too deep uh so they each draw an encounter card I'm doing this because I just want Agnes to resign and then let you know Wendy finish off the scenario. Uh, so uh, Agnes gets a frozen in fear because in her threat area, first time you perform one of the following actions: move, fight, or evade. Each round, it costs one additional action. Yuck. Okay. So that is a problem for her. And then. Wendy will get another Rotting Remains. Okay, we're going to do the same thing we did before. Minus two. Okay, well... Uh, we could be lucky to pass this, but one horror is not going to kill us. We'll just put it on a uh, good friend, Leo. Okay, Al uh, Agnes will take two actions to move into the swarm of rats, which engages her. And then Dark Memory goes off, which deals her two horror. She'll take one horror on herself, which she will then turn into damage on the swarm of rats. And she'll put one horror on Peter Sylvester. And then Peter heals it because after the end of her turn, he heals horror. So that is just fine. Um, and then Agnes is going to move and resign. So it's not a, not a, not a big thing. Okay. Uh, Wendy is going to use another charge of flashlight to investigate. Again, the shroud is zero. Oh, and she gets a Lone Wolf resource. Okay, it's a zero. She passes and gets a clue. Okay, that was action one. Action two. Action three. Action four. She will flashlight again, reducing the shroud down to zero. 
Oh, uh, you know what? Uh, Agnes should have tested this frozen in fear. So she's at 5v3. 4v3 because of uh, because of the frozen... Uh, the cursed luck. So she's at 4v3. Zero. Okay, so she actually passed the frozen in fear. And it makes cursed luck go away. And the stealthy deep is actually in the victory display along with the Clover Club boss. Okay. So we're back to Wendy using her last charge of flashlight. Reducing the shroud to zero. That is minus two. Okay, that's still a pass. And we get the clue. And that is the end of her turn. Conglomeration of Spheres comes in and does uh, a damage. It goes on to Agnes, does a damage and a horror. So she takes a damage, we'll put the horror on Peter. And then uh, nothing else hunts, so we're fine. Uh, and then it's time for upkeep. Agnes will get. Ha ha ha. Her other delve too deep. Well, that is indeed interesting. And a resource. Okay. So, Wendy, draw and get. Well, look what I found. Okay. That's pretty good. A resource. Okay, we are now at one of seven doom. We're drawing encounters. Agnes will get a twist of fate. Reveal a random token from the kiss bag if you reveal. Yeah. So. We actually really don't want to take a damage here. <laughs> I mean, I guess we're okay. I just want to have enough enough damage and horror that I can uh, still delve. And resign. I think I'm okay. Okay, she actually got the elder sign, so nothing happens. Excellent. Okay, and then Wendy hunted down. There are no un uh, there are no unengaged criminal enemies. Hunted down against surge. Okay, this is a. Oh, place one doom on each criminal in your location. If no doom was placed, lose two resources. She loses two resources. That's okay. She's got plenty. Okay, I thought it was actually something in the drinks, which actually would have made uh, a lot of uh, pain for me. <laughs> All right, uh, so I think Wendy is going to investigate. Sorry, let me just go on. Uh, she can't use her flashlight. She's at 3v2. She will commit... Uh, actually, we'll keep the look what I found. We'll go up by one. We have lucky in our hand and look what I found. So we're... or Not up by one, up by two. She's adding one from Leo. So we're at 4v3. Or 4v2. We can be lucky. We can look what I found. All these kinds of things. So... All right, so that is minus two. So we pass. Oh, and she got her resource from the wolf. I should have done that. So we pass. And we get this clue. So that was action one. Action two, she will move to this location. Action three, she will just play I'm out of here. And she will resign, putting all of her clues on the darkened hallway, which is not a VP location. And she has resigned. So she is out of there. And now we're left with just Agnes, who's trying to secure even more VP, because that's how greedy I am. She will move, taking an attack of opportunity from the Commemoration of Spheres, it's attack, uh, damage and horror, which kills Peter. Not permanently, he'll come back, don't worry. Um, we'll spend one resource to play Delve Too Deep, which gives her another damage and horror. And for fun, we'll use her ability to put a uh, damage on the Commemoration of Spheres, because why not? So we're playing Delve Too Deep. 
and we have to draw an encounter card. Please don't be something that kills us. We get a swarm of rats, which is fine because we can resign from this location. And we have no clues. And resigning does not provoke an attack of opportunity. So these enemies both just kind of hang out and go, where did you go? Meanwhile, uh, we resign. All the investigators have resigned. Uh, so we get to go to no resolution was reached. Uh, so you barely, yeah, you barely made it out of the club alive. Go to resolution one. We have to record that the Obanian gang has a bone to pick with the investigators. Dr. Francis Morgan was kidnapped. Um, and we get... Uh, one experience, or we reflect on the nice events, we get a pity XP. So our total XP here is going to be one, two, three, four, five, six, uh, which is not too bad for this scenario. Uh, it would have been nice to get the VP enemy, but I don't know. Uh, Wendy had lost her fight cards, and we'll see how deep it was. I mean, it was three from the bottom. Yeah, Servant of the Lurker. So, yep. Okay, well, anyway, I hope you enjoyed uh, that run and this progression run through Dunwich. I look forward to seeing you when we play extracurricular activities on Winging It.